हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द क्लास ऑफ हाई वोल्टेज इंजीनियरिंग सो इन दी प्रीवियस पार्ट ऑफ हाई वोल्टेज टेस्टिंग यू हैव सीन थ्री वीडियोस टू अंडरस्टैंड द वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ टेस्टिंग्स कंडक्टेड ऑन द लाइन इंसुलेटर्स टू इवेल्युएट इट्स क्वालिटी इन दिस लेक्चर आई विल गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द पावर फ्रिक्वेंसी वोल्टेज टेस्ट second the impulse voltage test and third about the pollution test including the discussion again you can uh, see uh, some sort of videos to examine the flash over situation over the line insulators under the application of power frequency high voltages under the dry condition and the wet condition so let us begin with the session so flash over test as you know that it is performed under the dry condition and the wet conditions the another test which is conducted on the insulators is the withstand voltage test which is also conducted under the application of high magnitude of power frequency ac voltages again under the dry and wet conditions so one has to know about the wet conditions when one can going to attempt the wet test on the line insulators so the conditions are normally specified by the iec standards the precipitation rate should be of 3 with plus or minus of 10% tolerance mm per minute direction of the water which needs to be applied to the insulator which is uh, connected as in service at 45 degree conductivity of the water is 100 micro siemens plus or minus 10% and temperature of water is 15 degree kelvin okay you can correct this uh, degree celsius so here on the in the photograph you can see uh the artificial rainy system let me uh, show you where exactly it is so here you can see these dots okay so these dots are nothing but they are the jets through which the water can be uh, applied or the what uh, uh, applied over the line insulator uh, which needs to be connected okay so these are the spraying jets so this spraying nozzles produces the rainy environment so you have seen this uh, conditions so let us begin with how the flash over test under the dry and wet conditions is being conducted and how the withstand voltage test is conducted so here you can see the uh, picture which uh, show you the power frequency dry flash over test on insulator so as you know that when the uh, voltage across the insulator becomes more than the standing capacity obviously you can observe the formation of this spark so this spark uh, may occur through the dielectric or over the surface of the insulators so in the photograph you can see that normally the flash is occurring over the surface of the insulator which is put up under the testing under the test so this situation is known as a flash over situation after the completion of the flash over test normally the visual inspection is uh, uh, done to identify whether any damage has been created or not so in the next photograph you can see that uh, how the flash over can damage the insulator surface okay so uh, this is what we exactly not required uh, during the testing so if suppose such type of phenomena is being observed then simply we can say that the insulator is not capable enough to withstand the applied voltage magnitude under the uh, uh, under the atmospheric conditions as specified by the iec standard okay so we are not expecting this uh, while we are performing the test on the insulators or even on the other high voltage equipments so the second photograph 
uh, will show you the damaging effect okay where you can see that there is a permanent failure of the insulator so it obviously needs a replacement so uh, during the flash over test the ac voltage of power frequency is being applied across the insulator and it is uh, being increased at a uniform rate of about 2% per second of 75% of estimated test voltage so this is what how you have to increase the voltage level across this insulator now as the uh, test is known as a flash over it means that our requirement is to create the flash over okay we need to create the flash over condition so we need to increase the voltage until the flash over takes place over the surface of the insulator so the voltage is increased in a step manner until the flash over takes place over the surface of the insulators or the bushings so if the test is performed under the uh, if the test is performed uh, uh, without the artificial rain then it is called as the dry flash over test it means that if suppose we are not using or we are not taking the help of a rainy system artificial rainy system then the test which is performed is said to be the dry flash over voltage test if uh, the test that we are going to perform under the application of that water sprinkles then uh, it is known as a wet flash over test because we are creating the artificial rainy system so uh, to conduct the test during the wet condition first you have to create the uh, uh, rainy uh, uh, rainy condition once you are creating a rainy condition after one minute of time gradually increase the voltage level until the flash over takes place and then uh, not down the reading afterwards uh, do the visual inspection whether the surface of the insulator uh, uh, shows you any kind of uh, damaging tracks or not okay if nothing is happened then simply we can say that the insulator has passed the test the another is the withstand voltage test so in case of the flash over test we are increasing the voltage value as it is unknown to us because our intention is to determine its uh, flash over voltage magnitude that the voltage at which the flash over may take place under the dry condition and under the wet condition but when one is going to perform the withstand voltage test to determine the withstand voltage capacity of the insulator under the dry condition and the wet condition normally the voltage which is specified by the IC standard is applied under these uh, uh, two different conditions and that voltage applicability is maintained for a short duration of time so duration suggested by the IC standard is 60 seconds or the one minute sometimes sometimes the manufacturer can also suggest the time uh, to maintain the voltage level under the specified conditions okay it depends upon the upon the client uh, or the manufacturer that for how much time uh, they want to investigate the uh, performance of the insulator under the presence of the high voltage stress but apart from that uh, apart from that uh, uh, client's suggestion the IC specifies 60 seconds so in this test the voltage of a specified value uh, as reported in the uh, standard specification is applied under the dry or wet condition for a certain period of time so normally uh, one minute of time is uh, preferred uh, while we are conducting the withstand voltage test uh, over the insulators so you need to mount that insulator as in service as you can see in the photograph that the insulator has been mounted as in service and then the flash over test and the withstand voltage test is conducted so the test object what is our intention the, our intention or the expectation is that the uh, sorry uh, our expectation is that the insulator the insulator which is uh, put up under the test condition should withstand the specified magnitude of voltage over a certain period of time under the dry condition and under the wet condition so uh, let us see some videos uh, which shows you the uh, flash over situations arising uh, while you are conducting the test under the dry conditions and under the wet condition one by one.
So you have, you have noticed that the flash over takes place over the surface of insulator. See. So the sound you might have listened. See over the string of the insulator how it happens. Pin insulator. See. So initially you have observed uh, the uh, inception of the corona okay and uh, when the voltage across the insulator becomes the uh, becomes more than the uh, withstanding capacity of the surrounding medium then you have observed the uh, spark is produced see So here the test is conducted under the dry conditions. So this test is known as a flash over voltage test on insulator under the dry condition. Okay, so now let us see the flash over across the polymer type of post insulator. You can see that the insulator is connected as in service. The corona. So now the field is greatly enhanced and at the end you can see the spark formation. So again this is the flash over situation. Okay, the one more video and uh, for the dry condition test. Okay, now let us see for the uh, wet condition. So now here in the wet condition has been developed first and then the voltage application is made. So first you can see the pre-discharge phenomena and then after you can see the complete breakdown. Okay, 
So after the short circuit, will mm. the breaker trip? Yeah. Okay. The soul sense. Yeah. Okay, you can find these uh, video links in the description section. So, from the description section, you can uh, visit to the uh, uh, visit to the uh, channels of particular uh, videos uh, uh, to uh, to understand more. I'll explain in class what they are doing. That's not Corona, this is dry bag. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. This happens in line. See, also. you can see the pre-discharges before the complete flash over takes place. Or any of these, this happens. And then it will finally stop. Okay, this is not a Corona discharge. Somebody has recorded, give me a music in See. Okay, so after some time, after some time, the flash over takes place. So in this video you have seen the pre-discharging phenomena and afterwards uh, the uh, complete flash over now let us see the last video okay here uh, you cannot see the uh, uh, formation of the flash over but you can see that uh, how this wet condition has been created So in this video, you can see uh, this is the this is the artificial rainy system uh, which uh, spraying the water over the insulators which are put up under the test. Okay, so you have seen that uh, the artificial rain uh, is created in the high voltage laboratory uh, to conduct the flash over test under the wet condition. Let us see the impulse voltage test. So again, the, uh, there are the two types. One is the flash over test and second is the withstand voltage test. So while you are conducting uh, the impulse water test, uh, you may observe this generation of the flash over situation. So flash over test is uh, done by applying the standard impulse voltage of a specified value under the dry conditions with both positive and negative polarities of the wave. You know that the impulse voltage wave is specified uh, by polarity, peak magnitude, and the time of intervals. So as per the IEC standard, the time of interval is 1.2 by 50 microsecond for the uh, lightning impulse voltage. Okay, 1.2 by 50 microsecond for the lightning impulse voltage. And for the switching surges, the value is 250 by 2500 microseconds the tolerances are there those tolerances can be considered while you are generating either the lightning impulse or the switching impulse so normally 
this impulse voltages are produced by the impulse voltage generators and uh, that impulse voltage wave is applied to the insulators or the equipments which are put up under the test okay so ideally you need to follow the uh, uh, you need to follow the procedure of the iec standard so generally this impulse voltage test is performed under the uh, dry condition with both positive and negative polarities of the wave usually the probability of the failure is determined for 40% and 60% failure values failure values or 20% and 80% failure values because it is very difficult to adjust the 50% of flash over probability voltage magnitude so generally uh, the flash over test over the uh, the impulse flash over test on the insulators or the bushings are normally conducted to determine the probability of the failure so probability of the flash over can be uh, uh, can be obtained by uh, by applying uh, the 40% or the 60% of magnitude which has a possibility to create uh, the flash over situation by an amount of 40% or 60% value so normally the range is varying uh, between uh, this 40 to 60 or 20 to 80 percent of failure values because uh, the critical flash over probability we cannot determine because exact uh, uh, it is uh, because it is very difficult to uh, set exact value of 50 percent of flash over probabilities so generally the flash over test is performed under the uh, dry condition under the impact of this uh, probable uh, voltage values which can uh, produces the uh, flash over across the insulators so generally how this uh, probability can be derived so uh, during the test during the test a series of applications of the impulse voltage was being applied okay if suppose we are considering that uh, uh, the 10 number of applications are applied and out of the 10 number of applications of a particular voltage magnitude if suppose four application will cause the flash over then uh, it is known as a 40 percent of probability okay so likewise you have to select the voltage magnitude and then you need to apply uh, for the number of times suppose the 10 applications or 20 applications you need to count that for how many times the insulation gets flashes over and uh, based on those number of flash over chances you can derive the probability so here what it is written that the average value of upper and lower limit is taken to uh, derive this probability value the insulator surface should not be damaged uh, during this test but yes light marking on its surface or the removal of the cement is allowed okay that should not be uh, there should not be the formation of cracks over the surface of the insulator after the completion of the flash over test so after the uh, after the conduction of this impulse voltage testing normally the visual inspection is done okay so uh, if you can easily identify the crack uh, of uh, some insulators of a different color then it is okay but if suppose uh, you are testing the porcelain insulator where uh, where due to the brownish color it is very difficult to identify the crack then the dye penetration test is conducted so uh, normally the chemical is applied over the surface of the insulator after some time after one minute of time uh, uh, as the liquid uh, converted into the uh, powder form it will be removed and uh, as the crack is developed uh, if the crack is developed that powder will stuck at the crack and you can easily you can easily inspect the development of the crack okay so when when we are performing this flash over test the condition is that the crack should not be formed but the slight marking on its surface or the removal or chipping off of the cement is allowed from the surface of the insulator uh, after this flash over test the Wisten voltage test is done uh, by applying the standard impulse voltage of a specified value under the dry condition with both positive and negative polarities. So in this test, if the five consecutive waves 
uh, do not cause any kind of flash over or puncture then we can say that the insulator is said to have uh, passed the test but if the two application causes the flash over then object is deemed to have failed the test if one application will cause the failure then additional 10 applications of the voltage wave are made so if the test object has withstood the subsequent application then we can say that the insulator has passed the test so this is the uh, one sort of procedure to conduct the impulse voltage test which is always conducted under the dry condition the pollution test so because of the problem of pollution of the outdoor electrical insulation and consequent problem of the maintenance of electrical power system the pollution testing become a uh, become a very very important okay so generally the pollution test is performed over the uh, insulators and bushings which are mounted or installed in an atmosphere for the indoor application uh, generally the pollution test is not conducted for but for the outdoor applications the pollution test is compulsory so the pollutions uh, which we can consider are the dust microorganism bird secretions and the other deposits the industrial pollutions like smoke petroleum vapors dust particle dust particle it means that the industrial dust the coastal pollution in which uh, the corrosive and hygroscopic salt layers are getting deposited over the insulator surface a uh, desert pollution in which the sand storms cause the deposition of sand and dust layers over the uh, insulating surface or the bushing surface ice and fog deposits at high altitude and in polar countries so these are the different types of pollutions uh, which we need to consider so uh, when you are performing the pollution test first you have to identify that the uh, 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 identify that the uh, uh, identify uh, that which insulator uh, is going to install in which location so first you have to deal with the location at which the insulator is going to be installed or your transformer is going to be installed if it is very close to the industrial area then you have to consider the industrial pollution if it is at the coastal area then you have to consider the coastal uh, coastal pollution if it is located in desert then you have to consider the desert pollution if it is uh, installed in the uh, area where you can observe the ice loadings then you have to consider the ice uh, ice as a pollution as well okay so the type of the pollution during the pollution test uh, normally uh, dependent upon the location at which the high voltage equipments are going to be installed so what this pollution does this pollution causes the corrosive effect it will cause the non uniform potential gradients across the insulator string and the surface of insulator and also cause the deterioration of the material so eventually we can say that the deposition of the pollution over the surface of the insulators and bushings are try to deteriorate its electrical properties so ultimately it affects on to its life it also causes if suppose they are non uniformly distributed if suppose the water particles are non uniformly distributed then they will be the source of the partial discharges so because of the local enhancement of the electric field and once the partial discharges are being created they always introduces the radio interferences so pollution testing is uh, very very important for the extra high voltage systems so the popular test which is uh, normally conducted is known as a salt fog test so here in the photograph you can see the different phases of pollution flash over of an insulator so this photograph will represent you that how the complete flash over takes place across the line insulator if the surface of insulator possesses the contaminations so first you observe the phenomena of the discharge 
uh, at the first days which is known as a pre arc which is appear at the stock of the insulator location of the highest current density okay so first you have the pre discharge phenomena and successively the length of the spark increases and connecting the high voltage terminal and the ground terminal so in the later on stage you can see that the shape of the discharge is changed so initially it is a straight line but after some time it will achieve a parabolic shape parabolic shape it means that now the arc is trying to move further so pre arc extends and bridges the distance between the two shades here you can see it it has bridged the gap okay now the further extension of the pre arc lead to bridging the two shades so here you can see it will now bridging the two shades and further extension and the combination of pre arc will cause the flash over of the insulator and that is known as a final arc so this phenomena you have observed in the uh, previous videos which i have shown to you so let us see the salt fock test how it is being performed so in this test the maximum normal withstand voltage is applied on the insulator and then the artificial salt fog is created around the insulator by means of jets or the salt water and compressed air so first you have to apply the uh, uh, maximum normal withstand voltage as specified by the standard afterwards afterwards you need you have to apply the artificial pollution which is salt flow salt fog which is created by uh, means of spraying the salt water and the compressed air so if the flash over occurs within one hour so here you can see that the salt fog test is performed for the one hour so if within one hour you examine the flash over then the test is repeated with the fog of lower salinity otherwise with the fog of higher salinity the maximum salinity at which the insulator withstands three out of four test without flash uh, flash over is taken as a representative figure so normally the salt fog test is conducted three to four times okay basically uh, uh, maximum five times it is being performed and if you found that uh, suppose if you are performing it for the four times and out of the four uh, three times you are observing that the insulator with this maximum salinity can withstand the applied voltage magnitude under this polluted condition then it is taken as a representative figure okay if uh, in uh, every attempt you are observing the flash over situation then simply we can represent that the insulator is not capable to withstand the applied high voltage magnitude under the polluted conditions so in this photograph you can see uh, the uh, effects that you may observe while you are performing the salt fog test okay so ultimately this photograph represents that the uh, how the pollution can create the damaging effect okay if the uh, if suppose the surface of the insulator uh, contains the uh, dust particles or the pollution over its surface then uh, you can see it improves its electrical conductivity as a result the uh, as a result the spark is being created over the surfaces so ultimately the track is created and you know the effect of this uh, uh, tracking and tracking and all over the solid dielectric material so gradually it will uh, deteriorate the uh, insulating material and uh, eventually it reduces its uh, life of operation so this is about uh, the uh, salt fog test so in this lecture uh, we have seen the uh, flash over voltage test under the power frequency and the impulse voltage we have seen the uh, uh, withstand voltage test under the uh, uh, power frequency applied voltage and the impulse voltage under the dry condition wet conditions and then we have seen the salt fog test which is the pollution test normally prefer, uh, preferable 
for the outdoor insulations. Uh, for getting the in-depth of knowledge, I will uh, I will put up the links in the description of this video from where you can uh, uh, assess the videos that I have shown to you. Thank you.